he took her eyes off me, which made her an easy mark. Everyone else probably still had their eyes on him. And he was like, okay, she looked down. She's not going to see me coming. Push, grab, go. And it you was know? just an opportunity. Was but, another also, thing. but what if she had just gone, oh, that's interesting, and just moved the chair around to the, the chair on the other side of the table so there was just an extra barrier between her and that guy? Right. Right? And that's, I mean, and if you care about preserving politeness, there's yeah, nothing or, polite hey, about that. Hey, Jim, saving you a seat. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about your book is it's so practical and and it's um, and it's and it's even you know you're you're a, a big tough guy with a lot of training. He's going to get his own TV show soon because I'm willing it. Um, and and but you, but you've got all of the tools and and so you know as as a as a uh, woman of a certain age, he's not in the best shape, but you know you know, I'm reading this and I'm getting a lot of really practical tips that anybody can use, even down to the smallest child. You talk about how to train your kids, even very young children, some yes. things that they can do to protect themselves uh, or that, that, that adults can share with kids. Can you share a few of those? We yeah, share I, I have an entire chapter in the book dedicated mm -hmm. to the safety trap of overprotecting children. Um, there was a, 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 there's an example that I use in the book where, uh, with a on a protective detail with with a family, we're walking through Central Park, and this mother comes up to us, and she's like, "Are you police? Like, can you help me? My child is you know, I, I can't find my my daughter." So we sent the family away, and I stayed back with the, my client's wife because she wanted to help. And um, we had been in an event where there was some police involved, and so we still had those contacts, and so we reached out and kind of put out a search party in the park, you know, put out an Amber Alert, and about an hour later. Um, the police found the child sitting, sitting on a park bench. And as we walk the mother over, you know, this kid comes, you know, bounding mommy, mommy, and like jumps in her arms. And she's mm -hmm. like, and the mom's like looking around and she sees that there's other people around. She's like, how come you didn't like ask for help? And the kid just like buries her head almost in shame and says, because everyone was a stranger, you know, and you said, we don't talk to strangers. And so as I was walking my client's wife back, back home, she was like, like, am I, overprotecting my kids and my, in my too much of a helicopter mom, like what, it, and basically what I said to her, like, listen, it's what you don't want to do is make, you want to make safety. You want to make, you don't want to make safety scary. You want to make safety fun. And you want to give your children the permission to participate in their own protection. And, you know, so if you're going to teach them about stranger danger, teach them that, that stranger danger is a one way street while it is wildly inappropriate for an adult to ask a child for help. It is perfectly appropriate for, an, for a child to ask an adult for help because a child is intrinsically not gonna negotiate against their own instincts. So if someone doesn't, if, someone is, if they're weirded out by someone, they're not gonna go to, the, to that person for help. But what you can do as a parent is offer them the three Fs, food, flags, family. If they see a place that is serving food or, you know, a, a, the ice cream vendor or the guy who's selling the pretzels, know that that person has been permitted and has, you know, at least a, some semblance of a background check. And they're going to love the social media promotion of helping to save a child. If you see someone with a flag on their uniform, like a cop or a fireman or a soldier or a veteran, or if you see a flag in front of a building like a library or a firehouse or a police station, you know that that's a safe place you can go for help. Or if that child sees another adult with children, families, those are people that they know they can go for help. And it doesn't need to be their mother. It can be a nanny or a babysitter. But if you see another adult with, a, with another child, those are so food flags families. Because if you just give your child the real world preparation the, 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 and, and empower them with the, the skill sets and the outlook and the insights that they can participate in their own protection, that they have the <clears throat> agency to help themselves succeed in staying safe, those are skill sets that they will manifest not only as a child, but that they will carry forward with them for the rest of their lives.